Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to make a simple kill brick, but we're going to take this kill brick to the next level by using a dictionary to store properties of the kill brick. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This video is going to serve two purposes. One of those is going to be to show you how to make a kill brick. And the second is to introduce you to dictionaries and show you how to use those in a script. So obviously, if we're going to be making a kill brick, we're going to need a part. So to insert a part into the game, just make sure you're under the home tab and then click on part. Once you have a part inside the game, you can resize it to whatever shape you want to. Don't worry about the color or the material. We're actually going to be setting that inside the script with our dictionary. Once you have the part and you've resized it to whatever shape you want to, we're going to be adding a script inside of that part. So to do that, just locate your part and then click on the plus sign and click script. The first thing we're gonna do inside this script is make a variable for the part. So I'm gonna say local kill part and that's going to be equal to script.parent. So what script.parent does is it takes a look at the script and then goes up one level. So going up one level is going to give me a reference for this part. After that, I'm gonna create a variable that we're going to use to toggle whether the part can damage the player or not. So I'm gonna say local can damage, and that's gonna be equal to true at first, and then we'll toggle it off when we don't wanna damage the player. Next, we're going to create our dictionary. To do that, it's actually very simple. We're just gonna say local. We're going to give our dictionary a name. So I'm just gonna say kill properties. We're going to say equal to, and then we're going to put a curly brace like this, and then just press enter a few times while your mouse is in the center to separate the two curly braces. Inside a dictionary, you're going to have key value pairs, which just means you're going to have a key, which you're going to give a name, and then you're going to assign that a value. So let's go ahead and add a couple examples into our dictionary. So let's say one of the things we want to change for this kill brick is the color. Let's go ahead and create a key called color and we're going to assign that a value. In this case, since we want to assign a color, we're going to give it a color value. So we're gonna say color three dot from RGB, which is just red, green, and blue values. You can either type in the values that you want or you can click on the color wheel and select it from here. So let's say I want my kill brick to stand out. I don't want it the normal red color. Let's go ahead and choose blue. Okay, so there we go. So we have assigned a color value to our key. If you want to assign more key value pairs, you're just gonna put a comma, and then you can create a new key value. Let's say we also want to be able to change the material. So let's create a key called material. And here we're going to say enum dot material dot, and let's go ahead and make it neon. Next, let's create a damage value. So we'll say damage equal to, and this is gonna be how much damage we want to deal the player every time they touch this part. So let's say we don't wanna to do too much damage. Let's just say 10. Next, let's create a value for a cooldown. So we'll say cooldown, and let's set that equal to one. So there you have it. So we have a dictionary that we're using to store properties for this kill part. Let's go ahead and use some of those values that we have in our dictionary. So if you want to access some of those values, like let's say we want to assign the color to the kill brick, Let's go ahead and start with our variable for our kill brick, which we set up here. And then we're going to assign the color value. And we're going to set that equal to the value we stored inside of our dictionary. To access that, we're going to start with the name of our dictionary. We're going to put a square bracket. And then inside of quotation marks, we're going to put the name of the key that we want to access the value of. So in this case, we want to use the color key to get at this value right here. So what this is doing, it's looking inside of our dictionary, finding our key called color, which is right here, and then it's going to give us back the value, which is stored right here. Okay, let's do the same thing for material. So again, we're gonna start with kill part dot material. We're going to look inside of our dictionary. We're going to use the key that we called material, and that's going to return us our neon part material. Okay, next, let's go ahead and set up our touch event so that when the player touches this part, we deal some damage to them. To do that, we're going to say kill part 
dot touched colon connect. We're going to connect this with a function. That touch event is going to give us the other part that touches our kill brick. In this scenario, other part is going to be the player's foot or the player's leg. And what I need to do is use that body part to find the humanoid inside of it. So I'm going to say local humanoid. And that's going to be equal to other part. So we're taking that foot or the leg. We're going to go up into the next level. So try to find the player that it's attached to by saying parent. And then from there, I want to see if there's a humanoid inside of this object. So I'm going to say find first child. And what I'm searching for is a part called humanoid. Okay, so that is my check. And then I'm going to say if humanoid. So if I'm able to find that humanoid part, then what I'm going to do. And before I actually deal damage to the player, I also want to check one additional thing. So once I find the humanoid, I also want to make sure that I'm able to damage this player. So I want to bring in that can damage variable that I created up top. So by default, this is true. So it's going to run the first time. What I want to do as soon as I detect that touch is I want to turn it off. The reason I want to turn it off is so that I don't spam the touch and I don't damage the player more than I want to. So I'm going to set can damage equal to false. So if this player touches the same part again, can damage is now false. So it's not going to run the damage for the player. Okay, so on this first run, I do want to damage the player. So to do that, I'm going to say humanoid colon take damage. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to pass the value, which is the amount of damage I want to deal the player. And I have this stored inside my dictionary, so I can just say kill properties. And what I'm searching for is going to be the damage value. After this, I want to wait for the cooldown that I have stored. So I'm going to say kill properties. Here, I'm going to be searching for our cooldown value. And after that cooldown, then I'm going to say we can damage the player again. And I'll turn this back to true. Okay, so that is my script. So at the top here, I created a variable for the part. I'm using can damage to toggle on and off when I damage the player. I'm storing some properties that I want to use later on in the script inside of this dictionary. I change some of the parts properties by accessing the dictionary and returning the value. And down here, this part is what's actually going to run a touch event that will damage the player. And again, inside of this touch event, I'm using some properties that I stored inside this dictionary. The nice thing about using this dictionary is if I want to go back and change some of these values. So after I test this and I see, hey, maybe 10 is not doing enough damage. I know exactly where to change this value and I can go from 10 to something like 25. So instead of hunting down in the script down here, I know exactly where it's at. It's clearly defined that this is my damage and this is my value. Same thing for the cooldown. If I want to damage the players a little quicker, I know exactly where to go and I know how to change this value. So if I want a shorter time, I can do 0.5, which would be half a second. All right, so let's go ahead and test our script to make sure it is working. So you can see before the part was black and now it is blue and it's also a neon material because I changed that in the script. And we can see if I walk over the part, it does about 25 damage to the player. And you can see I can walk over this, but it's only going to damage me every one second. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. So we talked about how to make an enhanced kill brick script by using a dictionary to store some values for our kill brick. All right, I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.